today we've got an exciting look at the biggest regulation change in F1 that's happened for a long time. There's a lot of fans that want to know what is behind the regulation change, know the details, and, and that's what we're going to be able to show them. Today with Canopy, we've been doing some tests to explore the differences between the 2025 F1 cars and the new 2026 cars with the new regulations. We've got our pro Formula One test driver, Gary Paffitt, in the simulator today, and he's going to give you an insight into what to expect for 2026 in terms of action on track, racing, how the car is going to perform. We can tell you, in theory, how fast any car will go around any circuit, but really the proof is when you give it to a real driver in the simulator, and then they can tell you exactly what's going to happen. The Canopy vehicle model is a really high fidelity model that captures in a lot of very fine detail the behavior of the, of the real vehicle. So if you combine that with Dynisma's really high fidelity motion systems, it means that the driver can really understand what the car would feel like with, with each of the setups that they're trying and give really accurate feedback to the, the engineers to help them understand the development of the car. It's the best way to develop an F1 car or in fact any motorsport vehicle or road car. What it allows you to do is model the physics of the car, put it in any environment and put a driver right in the heart of it. And in particular, what we love about Canopy is that we can use a whole load of offline simulations. We can predict very accurately the results that we're going to get. So any setup optimization that we're doing in Canopy, we can bring that to the simulator with a high degree of confidence that the driver is going to agree with the setup that we've got. It's the first time I'll have heard any driver feedback on this. So yeah, I can't wait to hear what he has to say. How much faster do you think? I think there's a, I think there's a couple of tenths. A couple of tenths. Yeah, so yeah. I think we're looking three, so we're looking for probably half a second. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm Gary Paffitt and I'm two-time DGM champion and a veteran of 10 years of Formula One test and reserve driver. Probably the biggest regulation change in Formula One that I can't remember the last time it was this big with so many components changing the powertrain, you know. The, the chassis, the aerodynamics, and just the impact that'll have both on the racing and on the, the drivability and the driver side of things in the car. Definitely more difficult, especially at the lower speed corners. It's uh, yeah, definitely more of a challenge. So what we're doing here is we're using Canopy lap time simulation to simulate the perfect lap. Uh, we're starting with the 2025 car, uh, then we're adding on the 2026 chassis. Uh, so this is lighter and it makes the car go quicker. Um, then we're adding the aerodynamics, which is uh, a drop in downforce, but a large drop in drag thanks to uh, DRS, which is now available front and rear wing. Um, this improves the lap time to 1.4 seconds quicker. Um, then we have DRS everywhere. Now we're about two seconds quicker. And the powertrain regulations, uh, the next, next setup change, um, the power can't stay full electrical for the whole of the straight, so it's maximum power at the start of the straight to get that initial acceleration out of the corner, and then it tapers down towards the braking zone. And the final change is the tyres are a little bit narrower, slightly less grip. Uh, overall, we're expecting the 2026 car to be around one second slower from simulation, uh, but the really interesting feedback we're going to get here is from the racing driver, and he'll tell us uh, exactly the implication of these changes in reality. Okay, so well done. Um, that's, uh, that's a 128.5. Very good. So from lap time simulation, we were expecting the 2026 car to be about a second slower, yeah. but you surprised us. Um, it wasn't that much slower. Yeah. Um, yeah. With some of the changes from the chassis, I you know earlier in the day you found the, the chassis changes were quite quite good for handling. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the the car is is um, definitely has less grip, so the less corner speed. Um, but I think especially from early on, like the, the chassis changes we made made the car a bit more responsive. And I think the car um, turns into the corners pretty well. So um, whereas the 25 car has got really good grip and really good stability, sometimes it can be a bit lazy into the corners. Whereas the 26 car seems a bit more a bit more direct into the corners. For me, the hardest thing to get used to with the 26 car was was the low speed performance, especially on exits.
everything we put onto the car, the car's balanced, the car feels great. You know, so you're able to pick out the differences. You don't have to spend two, three runs rebalancing the car to make it feel good before you can actually get a lap time reference or a feel of what it is. Because by the time you've done that many runs, you've forgotten what the car was like before. So for me to be able to put the, the canopy models in with all the simulations done, so you can just go and get a compare of what the chassis stuff feels like, what the tires feel like, what the area feels like. Um, in, in one run is, is really impressive. It makes it really, really efficient and really clear for the driver what these individual changes are doing. So you've done a season of Formula E. You're quite accustomed to cars that slow down and regen and a straight. Yeah. Formula E's got a lot more overtaking than Formula One. Yeah. So do you think this might benefit Formula One? Yeah, I think if, if you get to a point where teams are using the, the amount of energy they've got available in different ways on different straights, then it could make a, a big difference. You know, in, in Formula E, you have a point where um, you get a lot of lift and coasting, basically, to save energy. And um, how your, your, your map is set up around the laps means that you'll have stronger areas and weak areas. And that could be the same thing if teams have got their battery deployment in different areas, then it could mean that there's uh, b better overtaking opportunities. For me, the biggest difference and the biggest thing I struggled with, with with the new tires combined with the downforce was just the low speed. So it'll probably drive the, the, the teams towards looking at setups, which improve traction um, because it's, it's definitely going to be a limitation. And then if that's still a problem, then during the races, you know, drivers are really going to have to look after that side of things, not to overheat the tires and get problems like that. The qualifying is going to be more difficult, I think, to nail a lap because the car is just a bit more on the edge. But then, yeah, into the race, you know, the overheating the tires is a massive thing and especially now even in the high speed corners when there's less downforce um, you're stressing the tires more and things like this so and the tires being smaller they'll definitely take less you know less less load so tire wear and, and, and overheating and, and managing the tires is definitely going to be um, a, a bigger a bigger topic yeah in the 26 car The real advantage of, uh, of a driver in the lift simulator is to be able to be fantastically well prepared for what's coming next year with a new car and perhaps even a whole load of new aerodynamic and powertrain regulations and tyre regulations like we have coming in 2026. So it's a tool for the, for the teams to be able to put together all of their knowledge, all the data they get from CFD, anything they get from the wind tunnel, tyre models and of course the mechanical design of the car that they've developed, including all the suspension geometries and everything, they can bring this together and put it as a package and put the driver in the lead and get the driver's feedback. And this is a really critical tool for race car development, especially in F1. It was interesting after running the, the 26 components and then going back to the 25 car. It was a great car to drive because it just, it was easy. It was easy to drive, you know, and then you change to the 26 and suddenly it's more of a challenge again. And I think that's what the fans want to see. The drivers are definitely going to be tested more than before. Um, and it also should make the actual racing more interesting. So um, I'm, yeah, really excited. Yeah.